Hey everyone, DaVinci Resolve 18 is now out and one of the new features is the addition of automatic depth maps in the edit page, in the color page, and in the fusion page. So I'm going to demonstrate some of the ways to use the depth maps and maybe just a few things that you can do with them. So let's jump right in. So I have an image. It's just a landscape. And I'll zoom that up just a little bit to fill in the full screen. And you can see there's not much to this, but if I search up here for depth, and I need to be on, on the open effects here, and you can see there's this depth map. And if I drag it onto my clip, I'll have a new menu open up. It's the effects. Make sure this inspector is open if you want to see this. And you have to have this clip selected to be able to make any adjustments. Go up here to the effects. And you can see it's identifying it as a new open effects. And you can see what this does. There's two qualities here. I'm going to turn it down to faster just so we can move along a little quicker here. And this is the automatic depth map that it creates. And that's really cool because, you know, to do this before you had to use external software like Photoshop. But in this case, we can take regular 2D images and create this cool depth map automatically. So there are a few settings and you can see this is the preview for that you can turn that off or on and we can adjust the map levels and so the depth that this affects so the limits are set by default from zero to one and you can change those and you can see your depth map kind of automatically adjust as you go and so these are the portions that you're picking up by setting these limits the gamma is kind of the brightness of this map and so it, it operates kind of inversely so just keep that in mind and one is the default and if we want to isolate certain depth areas of the image we can select this isolation and you can probably hear my machine ramping up a little bit it takes a little bit of processing power to do this but we can make some adjustments here and there we go we're getting kind of a band here of different area that we want to separate and we can make this really hard or we can add some softness to the scene there and we can do some post processing to the map and that just creates some blur we can do that and we can expand and contract our image so if we want to reduce it or expand it and then filtering Again, this just kind of cleans up the edges. You can make them, you can see that's really rough to the far right. And this will smooth everything out more to a consistent line to the left. And we can select if we're using the alpha or not. In this case, I don't have an alpha for this image. It's just a regular 2D image. Okay, so that's the edit page. And to use it in the fusion page, we're going to want to create a fusion composition. And to do that, you go down here to effects and you drag and drop a fusion composition. I already did that. So it's here jumping to the fusion page. So in the fusion page, I already have a few of these items set up in the composition and some of these nodes placed. And I'll go through all these, but basically to get a depth map node placed in your project, hit the shift space bar and you can search for depth. And right now they don't have an icon yet. So just select it and hit add. And then you're gonna get one of these depth map nodes. And I'll go over the controls here in a second. I'm gonna delete that because I already have one right here. And I wanna add my image into my fusion page. So I'll just drag it right into the flow area. And let's take a look at it. There's my image. I'm gonna take it into the depth map. And on this side, we'll take a look at it. And we'll get a preview if this checkbox is selected, which it should be by default. And it's all the same controls that we had in the edit page. So I'm not going to cover those again. We can make our tweaks, but that's what we're going to see. So next, I want to do something in this fusion page, which would be kind of fun. And so I have my image and I want to add a displace 3D in line with this depth 3D. So again, you just hit shift space bar and you can type in displace and it's this one right here. I've already got it here. 
So there's not much to control. We can select the channel um, and we can check the uh, scale and the bias. In this case, we're just going to use this alpha. So that's what we're doing here. And we need to insert an image. So I have, it needs to be a 3D image, which is really important. So going back to the media pool, I'll just drag and drop another copy of that, kind of that scene there into this image plane. And so it's just on a billboard now. So that's important because it creates that 3D image for us. And this displace is gonna use this image as what we're gonna see. And it's gonna use this alpha information created by the depth map node to create some different 3D depth to that. So it's kind of like a little bit like a bump map, but you can see what I mean. So now if we look at this in 3D space, that's what the displace 3D node is doing, created by this depth map. And we can go in and tweak it if we'd like. So it gives us a nice 3D image. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So that's really kind of handy. And then what I did is I took it into a 3D merge and I created a 3D camera here and then put a render node. And then I'm using a OpenGL render because I want to use my graphics card to speed it up a bit. I'm not applying any lighting because that wouldn't really be helpful for this scene. So everything else is set up as default with this render. I want to take that out to the media out to get it back to the edit page. Just connect that. And if I look at the edit page, I'm just seeing an image there. So in the fusion page, if you want to do some things like moving that camera around to do some animation, you can do it here. Looking at that 3D scene. So there's my camera and this is the output of the camera. So if we want to move this camera and see some of these features of this 3D scene, we can do it that way using that camera and just put some animation on there. So I created a short clip and just showing some camera animation and this is what it looks like. And using the same procedure, I used a second image. Let me show you what that looks like. So I want to make this castle kind of stand out in 3D space. You can see we have some cool depth, but there's some warping going on. It's kind of difficult to get these edges using this depth map. Uh, we'd really have to tweak it to get it perfect. So one thing that I did is I used a polygon tool into our media. And I just basically drew around this castle and then put it on an image plane so it's kind of standalone. And then now I can take this sequence and pipe it into the Merge 3D. Just a different way to give you depth. I mean, it's going to have that second piece in there unless you mask that out and kind of fake draw something in there. But if you give it kind of a distance out front, it's really believable. You can get something that looks pretty good and then adding that warping in and that 3D shape in using that depth map, you can create some pretty cool little 3D scenes, uh, kind of fake 3D scenes. So just another idea for you guys. And then jumping into the color page. So looking at this original image in the color page, I can select the effects up here and search for depth. Drag this onto our node tree as well. And we get a depth map here as well. The advantages of using this in the color page is we could color uh, certain parts of our scene if we want to show the foreground or background and do some coloring on either one of those. It'll be awesome to have this feature now to be able to do that. There's some other things that we can do, some blurring and other options using this depth map now in DaVinci Resolve 18, which is really awesome. So I just wanted to show you guys some of the new things with the depth map now in DaVinci Resolve 18 that we really couldn't do before. To me, that's really cool because 
uh, creating those depth maps outside of DaVinci Resolve does take a lot of time and to have that feature built right in is really awesome. So appreciate the Blackmagic design guys for putting that in. If you got any questions on this new feature, post them in the comments below. Let's have some discussion about it. Appreciate your time today, guys. Take care, everybody.